Thank you. I want to introduce our next uh, speaker from the House. Uh, Congressman Ed Perlmutter is, serves on the House Science Space Technology Committee as well as the Financial Services Committee. And uh, we're talking backstage. He's pretty good at cartwheels as well. I don't think you're going to see them today, though. So please welcome Congressman Perlmutter. <laughs> Hey, no cartwheels today. <laughs> um, well, the first question I want to ask you is, um, you know, we were talking earlier with the senators uh, about how this field has changed so dramatically. I was watching a rerun of, of Seinfeld, and he was doing a bit about how women are so good at, at paying uh, at the grocery store with checks. I mean, when's the last time you saw someone whip out the checkbook at, at the grocery store? Um, now, I know from personal experience, though, You've been affected. You've been hacked several times. Is that right? Right. Well, the systems that I'm part of have been compromised or hacked. Okay. So we're shoppers at Target. My wife says if Target doesn't have it, she doesn't need it. And we shop a lot at Target, and they got breached. There okay. was a big That's data right. breach a big, there. Right. Um, I'm insured through Anthem Blue Cross. They were breached. So overall, the system's been compromised, whether my exact account has been compromised, we don't know, but they have to worry about everybody within their system. Mm -hmm. uh, have a mortgage with JP Morgan, same kind of thing. There had been an overall breach to the system, and so you get the letter saying this may have been compromised. It doesn't look like it when I look at my transactions that there are any problems, but the right. system. And then finally, because I'm an employee of the United States of America and the Office of Personnel was hacked, Again, same kind of thing. Notice to our office, please be aware. So, you know, obviously the systems are really great. They're convenient, mm -hmm. they're efficient, but they're also subject to the criminal attacks and, and theft and robbery and embezzlement and fraud and all those things that were talked about by Mark and by the senators. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as data security, uh, there are a lot of proposals in the House floating uh, around, and you are working. Uh, you have legislation. Can yes. you describe it, what, what it would do? Well, it, we call it the Data Breach Insurance Act. Mm -hmm. And what it involves is, you know, just go back to the basic structure of these things. It, we were talking, you know, there's bad actors, there's good actors, there's the criminal who wants to steal something. And, and we don't know what that something is anymore. It could be, you know, I've got a fuel band and somebody sees I'm limping and I'm a quarterback of an NFL team and they use that information for Tibet or something. Mm -hmm. You just don't know what it is anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to do is we want to provide an insurance mechanism for which you'd get tax credit, you'd be able to apply a tax credit towards insurance if you have implemented a cybersecurity sort of in infrastructure um, strengthening or fortifying, kind of like Visa's been fortifying their system, mm -hmm. knowing full well that there are a lot of genius, mad geniuses out there trying to figure out how to either be vandals, you know, just for fun, screw it up, mm -hmm. or, you know, for profit, take something. So we want to, the president uh, a couple years ago as part of an executive order said to go to the, the National Institute of Standards and Training would put together some cybersecurity infrastructure things that might make sense. And if a company or a person or a system benefited and went to that and started fortifying their infrastructure, mm -hmm. they'd get a tax credit and they'd get insurance on the other side in case there was a big breach. Okay. So you're actually, you know, insuring for a data breach. Okay. And now what, what's the next step? Uh, getting co-sponsors because there are, as I mentioned, there are several bills. There has been no real consensus, right? So there hasn't been much consensus because this is evolving like crazy. I mean, you go back to the basics of, you know, we have plenty of laws about the crime. Mm -hmm of theft or burglary or fraud or embezzlement or whatever. So th that is in place. And you know, it used to be, okay, you steal from the stagecoach, mm -hmm. you know, and they've got the trunk. And so, you know, I was trying to think about it, so you fortify the trunk so that when they rob it, you know, they can't get into the trunk, but it's still stolen from me. And so we're trying, the, the whole system has evolved now. You know, we, I was listening to the senators. They mm -hmm. have, you know, automatic deposits, automatic payments. Now that the system is really changing and is much more convenient, people are understanding that. 
I think we're not going to try to prescribe the technology. The visas of the world and their engineers know what's best for them. Right. But we want to provide this insurance. And so now I think that it's not a, I don't see it as a Democratic Republican kind of a, you know, right. a schism or chasm. Uh, I think I'll get some uh, co-sponsors for this and get this moving because mm -hmm. then you get the insurance industry trying to figure out what the risk is, you get the companies trying to minimize their risk, and we'd have the federal government urging people to take steps mm -hmm. through a tax credit. And I asked the senators, as you saw, how do you do your banking? Obviously, every time you've been you've been scared because you've you know several times you've had to make sure that that you weren't hacked. Um, have, have do you do automatic? Do you you know? Because I'm kind of in the mix. I do some online and some paper. I, I'm with you. Uh -huh. So I do. I probably visit. So I bank at Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. So I probably go to the bank from time to time. I transact business with the tellers. Right. I go to the ATM that's just outside of the bank, and I get cash. Uh, I do have a, you know direct deposit. I have some automatic payments, but I do write checks. So it's a you know for me it's a it's a mixture of things. Mm -hmm. And um, you know the easier it is, sometimes you kind of forget and you don't look at your bank statement. You go, okay, what happened there? Mm -hmm. And um, but for the system, for the bank, for the uh, system that's doing the transmitting of the transactions, the remittances. Uh, for the company, the retailer, say, so to speak, they need to have some precautions in place. Mm -hmm. And just remember, you know, so you'd have the stagecoach driver and the, you know, the policeman or the guard right next to them. So, you know, we can go back and just look at different ways that we've sent the money, we sent the treasure, we've sent the dangerous material, and how do we protect it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really, we're just sort of moved into a whole new payment system, and we've got to figure out ways to protect it and defend against folks who would do some harm. And, and are you, as far as the, the, you know, five years, ten years, can both the legislative and executive branch keep up? What's, what's the key there? What are you concerned about? Well, it, in terms of understanding the technology as it continues to evolve and change, um, you know, for, I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Practiced law for a long time before I was elected to Congress. I'm not a mathematician. I don't write algorithms. I don't, that's not what I do. But I can set policy about crime or vandalism or accidents. You know, sometimes it isn't that somebody meant to do anybody any harm. It just, all of a sudden, the information went off the rail for some reason or other and went to a lot of people it should never have gone to. Mm -hmm. So, I think we have to, just as the senators were saying, I think they were absolutely on track. And, you know, sometimes I'm not sure about the Senate in that respect. But, uh, <laughs> but I thought those guys really, they want to set the broad policy parameters involving crime or accident. How dangerous is the, the treasure? How valuable is the treasure? Is it, you know, you could have an Edward Snowden. Mm -hmm. You know, he was in Fort Knox of information. You know, whether he's Paul Revere or Jesse James, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I see all of us working together to try to set the broad policy parameters, giving these evolving payment systems and information systems. And, you know, we can provide insurance to the private sector if something gets breached or the individual if it gets breached. The national security questions are, are much bigger you know, as if a China or somebody is attacking our system or probing our system, mm -hmm. what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. um, you've worked with, with Republicans in the past, and as you mentioned, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this issue is not Obamacare. Uh, there can be consensus. There is a new, but there has been a lot of gridlock, uh, gridlock in Washington over the last several years. There's a, a new House Speaker in, in Paul Ryan. Um, do you see more legislation on cyber and other issues are you hopeful for maybe not 2016, maybe a little bit in 2016, but, but going forward in 2017, do you get, get a sense that uh, there is a new sheriff in town, he, he met with the Congressional Black Caucus, um, or is this just kind of a honeymoon? I think it's a wait and see time. Mm -hmm. um, I know Paul, I, I came up and, you know, Mark was up here with his phone. I just want to show my phone with the Broncos uh, on the back. And so I gave Paul who, who just beat a, a Ryan's Packers. Packers right? So I, I had to point that out to him a couple days ago. He wasn't particularly happy about that. So, uh, no, he's a friendly, engaging guy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, 
can benefit all of us. On something like cybersecurity, you know, the real issue is kind of the privacy components of this, how much information is shared, to whom is it shared, mm -hmm. why is it shared, in an effort to minimize the crime or the accidents or the attacks. Right. And that's the real tussle is can be bet within caucuses, the Democratic caucus or the Republican caucus, between those that want more safety and security and those that are saying, wait, that's, that's giving away too much information or allowing people to have too much information about a particular thing and the privacy of that individual or that corporation or whatever mm -hmm. is uh, being compromised mm -hmm. you know, in the name of security. So that's the tussle we're having right now. Right. Um, what do you hear back home, um, you know, in the Beltway, we talk about legislation and a lot of acronyms. Uh, when you go back home, uh, whether it's on privacy or emerging technologies or government regulation, what are you hearing that, that you bring back to Washington that maybe Washington doesn't know? I actually, as you're saying that, uh, when I was walking precincts uh, last fall, I was in Arvada, Colorado, and I went to a door, and the guy comes out, and he starts talking in terms of privacy. He had worked for the federal government. He was worried about the privacy of the individual, and I must have been on his doorstep for 20 minutes as he was talking about uh, you know the availability of information and the fact that he thought too much information was being shared, and <laughs> it was very much a libertarian kind of a... Uh, comments to me. So you do get these things at the doorstep or, you know, there was uh, uh, other times it could be credit card fraud. Somebody had his identity taken mm -hmm. and through a credit card fraud. I had that at a doorstep. So mm -hmm. people, I mean, these are their, in their daily lives, the transactions that they worry about. Maybe from the one guy, very philosophical, you know, high level privacy is being compromised to the other person who actually had been ripped off. Mm -hmm. Now, you serve on, on, on two relevant committees, the Financial Services uh, Committee and the Science Committee. What are those panels uh, working on that, that people should know about? Well, both panels have, uh, have relevance and jurisdiction right. uh, to this subject. So Financial Services Committee, as I said, we're going to introduce this data breach insurance and try to get it moving. Uh, John Carney ha and I think Randy Nugabauer have a bill on the Data Security yep. Act, which kind of expands some things in Graham Leach Bliley, you know, from a number of years ago. So there are some cybersecurity pieces within that committee. What do you think of that legislation? Uh, I haven't, I don't think I've gotten on it as a co-sponsor No, yet. you're not a co-sponsor, no. Okay, no. good. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little too prescriptive for me. Okay. I, I think it needs I mean, obviously to that's why you have your own bill. You yeah, a little too solution. prescriptive. I'd rather have the, the individual or the company or the system be able to say, you know what, we're fortifying, we're going to take advantage of a tax credit, it's all voluntary, and we're going to get insurance, which the system understands very well, and let the insurance company sort of try to figure out the risks of some major loss. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So then on science, space, and technology, uh -huh. that one, so uh, Visa came and a number of others came and talked to us about all the encryption devices and the, the evolution of this thing. So we have two major national labs, uh, Sandia and Los, and, uh, Los Alamos down in uh, New Mexico, and I can't remember which one is doing it, but they, they are coming up with something they think is the, the best way to encrypt things ever, and it's unbreakable. Now, some genius, some da time down the road will figure out how to break it. You know, you got different kinds of safe crackers, and they live to try to break something like that. But we, on the science committee, are really looking at you know, the future and the far-reaching technologies of information management and information science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we don't have any particular bills there, but it's, it's been for us to kind of learn about this, really, this tremendous uh, change and speed at in which we pay things and we, and we give up information, whether it's from a fuel band to the phone to the iPad to whatever it might be. Do you think a uh, cyber bill will be signed into law before the 2016 election? There's a chance, yes. Okay. Yes. I, I think that there is building consensus about the need for collaboration, and we are working on trying to uh, balance the privacy aspects 
uh, uh, versus the collaboration and the security piece. And I think we're getting close. There will be somebody who doesn't like one side or the other side of it. Sure. But our job is to, to move this forward, uh, balancing as best all of these aspects. Better sooner than later, though, right? Better sooner than later because we have been, whether it's uh, national actors or just somebody having fun or some criminal. I mean, these things seem to be accelerating at a pretty rapid rate, and we need to have as many uh, individuals and companies and agencies talking to one another to really set up a, a pretty strong perimeter without, and try to balance that against, you know, your personal, you mm -hmm. know, you know, you went to the doctor yesterday and you don't want that known to the world. Right. So. You know, it's not easy, but we're getting there. And I think we'll have it done before the end of the year. I mean, not this year, but before the end of end this, of this session. Yeah. Okay. Um, just last question, uh, open-ended, kind of a closing statement. What, anything I didn't ask that you think should be emphasized uh, in this field? Well, I think that, that we, we as policymakers, you as the journalist, we shouldn't get lost in the technology because we're not the scientists, mm -hmm. we're not the engineers, and sometimes you can get lost in all of this you know, fast-moving evolution. We've got to go back to the basic transaction, mm -hmm. which is I'm providing you information or I'm handing you my treasure. Mm -hmm. And we don't want it stolen. We don't want it compromised. We don't want it lost in some fashion or another. So for us, we've got to go back to the basics of this, that there's a buyer, there's a seller. We're somehow getting the money from the buyer to the seller. There's information that is important to me and it's private to me, I don't want somebody getting it. You know, just to get back to the basics, otherwise we get lost and kind of everything comes to a halt. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Congressman. Please, thank the Congressman. Thank you I really all. appreciate it. <laughs> thank hey, you, Bob. Take it easy. Hey, thanks. Thank really you. Uh, I want to uh, introduce our next panel, which be, will be moderated by Corey Bennett. He's a staff writer for The Hill. Uh, uh, ben Flatgard is the Director for Cybersecurity Policy at the National Security Council, and Jason Oxman is, is the CEO at the Electronic Transaction Association. Uh, please welcome them.